My name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan. And today, I want to take you to the English gardens in Munich, Germany, so that we may discuss the Norse god of mischief himself, Loki. Welcome to the third episode in Loki Week and the final episode where we're going to discuss the modern worship and veneration of Loki, but also really discuss why I think Loki has come back in prominence in the modern Norse pagan interest wave era, whatever you want to call it. Now, personally, I'm not much of a Loki follower myself. I don't often give offerings to him. I have maybe done it a couple of times and it's usually to be like, hey, maybe stop messing with me. Um, there's a little too much mischief in my life, um, but that's about it. I've been kind of dancing around the circle where it feels like that maybe I should try to reach out and have some form of connection. Um, but I'm really glad I did this research and did the research video for the first episode. Um, it really revealed a lot to me. I was definitely in the camp where I was just kind of like, eh, I really don't want to talk to him. I really don't want to deal with Loki. Um, I just feel like it's only going to end up in bad things. But after doing my research, I found that at least based on the stories we know from the prose and poetic Edda, that Loki isn't necessarily an evil deity and working with him may not produce wholly negative results. You have to just have to deal with the chaos and mischief wrapped around it. Loki has pulled some small and big pranks on me and throughout my entire life. Though since I've started communicating with Thor, Odin, and Heimdall, he seems to have backed off significantly. I've considered speaking with Loki and trying to learn more about him, but needless to say, I'm a little hesitant to invite him into my life again. This comes from Joe on Instagram at 3 wandering underscore raven 3 just as I said in the research video, we have no historical evidence to really suggest that the pre-Christian Scandinavian and Germanic people that would have worshipped the northern traditions and the northern deities really worshipped Loki at all. We don't know of any Loki shrines. As far as I know, there's really no towns named after Loki. Um, there's no groves named after Loki. And there's no like whispers of a cult of Loki. So why is it happening now? Why is it that I would honestly say from my own just watchings of the community, I would say Loki's in the top five deities worshipped in this modern time, or at least primarily worshipped, you know, next to Odin, Thor, maybe Tyr, and then Freya, and then Loki? I feel like he's a pretty prevalent god. Now, I have a few personal theories of why I think this is, um, but looking into Loki's personality, I do think that there's some things that people are attaching to now um, quite a lot. I've been searching for a long time for the right god, and as soon as I found Loki, I felt a connection. As I typed the words into the Google search bar, should I devote myself to working with Loki, my computer completely shut down, and I was left staring at a black screen. I've had this computer for over a year now, and it's never randomly done that. So I laughed and had my answer. The next day, I made a devotional candle that the way the wax melted ended up very interesting. Somehow the end of it curled up like a snake's tail, and I'll let you be the judge of that. One of the things that came into my mind while doing the Loki research video um, is the anti-hero and the anti-hero being so popular nowadays. I mean, you look at, back at like The Dark Knight, which is one of the most influential movies from when I was in high school. If you're my age, around the, you know, the 20s, the you know, early 30s range, way back when The Dark Knight came out, when we were in high school and maybe elementary school or college, when Halloween came around, what did most people dress as that year? Did they dress as Batman or was everyone the Joker? Because in my situation, everyone in my high school that year, every guy and a few of the girls, all dressed as the Joker. When it comes to The Dark Knight, it is overall a good movie, but I think most people remember that movie for Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker. I mean, obviously, you, you really can't deny that's one of the things that really sold that movie, and the fact that we have this Joker obsession where he's kind of become this like weird Shakespeare, like everyone wants to play Hamlet, but now everyone wants to play the Joker because it's the breakout role. Um, but the anti-hero has become so popular um, in modern media and modern culture. If you really think about it, most of the TV shows and movies that we have nowadays, the main hero, the main protagonist, is no longer a Thor. The main hero in our eyes, or at least in more prominence in our modern era, is Loki, or at least an anti-hero. So I really do think that the perception of heroes and myths, superhero stories really are just mythology. I mean, you have a, a super powerful being in a godlike way, which is one of the reasons I do like Zack Snyder um, in his modern interpretation of like Superman. People worship Superman as like a god in those movies. And I think that's kind of what superheroes are, or at least that's what they replaced in our modern mind is these mythology stories. 
um, and a lot of them taking aspects of you know Greek gods and Norse gods. So when you look at a character like Joker, I really see Loki. And again, I think this is why he's become more popular is because the anti-hero has become more popular in our modern minds. Now, I'm not saying that if you follow Loki or you honor Loki or if he's your patron deity, I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing or you're wrong. What I'm saying is you just have to recognize that historically, we cannot tell that Loki was honored or venerated at all. And it does look like from our modern world, this is, he's become popular. I mean, you have a Loki TV show that just came out and it's about Loki. It's about the character. It's no longer about the mythos. He's not even in Asgard. He's not even in like a Norse world. He's in science fiction now, but the character Loki is what's carrying it, an anti-hero. So I believe the, like putting the anti-heroes on the pedestal in our modern minds really is, is what contributing to people wanting to follow Loki more. My first experience with Loki was in a dream. The dream was detailed and it was one of those dreams that felt like a film. What surprised me the most was the directness of his message. I've even reached out to my teacher who also practices modern shamanic energy work so she could tap into the energy and see what about and, and validate my experience. Loki explained that he wants to help me with my self war struggles. He helps clear away the energies of old wounds from the life from this life and past lives. When he's around, I feel a slight pulling sensation as if energy is being pulled from me, indicating that he's helping me remove the things I'm ready to let go of. This comes from Elena at Midwestern.pagan. Hopefully from what you can tell from the stories I'm sharing, Loki is a complicated deity because it does seem like he is actually helping people, at least people who are struggling with, you know, um, you know, who they are or being an outcast or a misfit or having, you know, being, you know, different from everybody else because he is a god that is different from everybody else, which is, you know, in our modern age more common. You know, for the most part, everything was about the community and outcast and, you know, people who didn't quite fit in were probably more rare, whereas now we're all very individual, we're not so community based, so I think people being more low-key or at least being more independent a little bit more chaotic is a little bit more normal um, and again I don't think it's a bad thing that people are following Loki as I said in my research and my is Loki good or evil video he isn't necessarily an evil deity he is a chaotic neutral deity and I think that's just important to recognize when you go into worshiping him just like me with Odin I recognize that Odin is both order and chaos madness and wisdom both of those things come together if you want more wisdom you're gonna get a little bit more madness if you want to be a leader you're gonna have to deal with the problems of being a leader um, and I think that's one of the things you have to recognize when you go into possibly venerating and honoring Loki is you are worshiping a chaos deity. Um, while he's not necessarily inherently evil and he's not seeking to spite you, you are venerating a chaos deity. So if a chaos enters your life more, kind of have to accept that. My first offering I gave to Loki was cinnamon whiskey, chocolate, and a poem I wrote about his children. There was an immense amount of energy that came upon of warmth and understanding. I grew up taken away from my father and hidden away from my family. Growing up, I felt the connection to Loki through his children. Knowing how he felt when his children were taken from him brought this familiarity to me. He's not an evil god. Yes, he can be mischievous, but I believe he is Loki the Unknown, the great father, very misunderstood. A god of creativity, the force and life and cycle of nature. Times can be a bit chaotic with him, but I believe in order to have peace and happiness, you must go through life with a little bit of pain and chaos. This comes from Norse Crafter. I feel like I've given as much warning as I can. I mean, truly, if you are seeking to worship and venerate Loki, I mean, just understand that it is a neutral chaos path, at least from my research. And I hope you watch all these videos before you really dive into it. And I really hope the stories of the people that I've shared throughout this have helped you understand Loki a little bit better as well. Loki definitely isn't a god for everyone, but he's a god that I think affects all of our lives. And the people that want to get more, you know, entwined with that because their life is more chaos, um, their life is being a little bit more of the outcast is a little bit more on the fringe of society, I think Loki is a good deity for you. Um, but if you've had really good Loki experiences, I ask you to share them down below because he's still a deity I'm still trying to understand more myself. Um, and as far as me moving forward, I don't know. I've given a few offerings to Loki here and there. Like I said, it was mostly to tell him to leave me alone, but I have had an offering to him where I, I, I poured out a drink for him at a Loki spot someone had made at a gathering and basically made peace with him where it's like, I think I, I understand you a little bit more and I kind of committed, hey, I'm gonna make this video so maybe more people can understand you as well. So I think that's the best Loki experience I've had, um, but I'm still very cautious as well. But thank you for joining me for Loki Week. Thank you for joining me in this three-episode arc. If you haven't already, please make sure you check the other two episodes. I have the episode where I talk about the raw facts, the raw information, um, the episode where I talk about is he good, is he evil, 
Um, is he, you know, what is he exactly? And then, of course, this episode talking about the modern worship of Loki. Um, but I hope it's been helpful for you, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next God Week. I'm not quite sure who I'm going to do. It's probably fitting that I do an Odin Week, so I might be doing that, might be doing a Frere Week, but I really just need to make sure there's enough content in the prose and poetic edit to actually do a full week. But please let me know down below who you'd like me to discuss moving forward in the next God Week. Keep in mind, I've already done Thor and Freya, and now Loki. Thank you so much for joining me for these videos, and from Munich, Germany, I send you a warm and happy until the hall, Skull. Thank you for joining me for Loki's week. Um, I hope you join me for all of the episodes and I hope you're enjoying them. Um, but if you want to become more involved with the wisdom of Odin and what I'm doing here and watch more of my travels across Germany while I'm here, please consider donating to Patreon. It's the only way I'm able to do this full time. And not only will you be supporting me and what I'm doing, you'll also be gaining access to several benefits, including our community discord, early access videos, and even live streams that I pretty much do exclusively on Patreon at this point. So if you want to support my descent into madness and you want to support me finding more unique places like this, please go down below and the Patreon link should be there. Mm -hmm.